वेलकम माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी विल डिस्कस ऑन शॉर्टेस्ट जॉब फर्स्ट दैट इज एस जे एफ स्केड्यूलिंग अलगोरित एज वी डिस्कस इन अवर प्रीवियस वीडियो लेक्चर सिमिलर टू दैट इन दिस एस जे एफ स्केड्यूलिंग अलगोरिथम वी विल कम अक्रॉस a numerical problem where the question normally ask like this draw a gantt chart and find average turn around time and average waiting time using sjf for a process that is being defined in the pid at and bt let let us discuss about this particular algorithm in brief now this is called as a, a, a shortest job first shortest job first means it is looking for a job where there is a minimum waiting time where it is having a minimum waiting time now such process if you want to uh, uh, understand how the PT, uh, cpu is going to schedule is so let us see the the table where the pid at and bt is distributed it is similar to the our, our previous example that we have seen in the fcs so i put it the same process p1 P two, P three, P four, P five, where the arrival time of P one is zero. It needs eight unit of time to process. P two one, it needs one burst time. Two, it needs a burst time three. Three burst time two. Five is four burst time six. Here also we will ignore the priorities. now in the case of a sjf the point is that first we will look for the minimum waiting time or i can uh, uh, put in such a way that in the case of a sjf the first process with the first process first process means in this case is p1 with the smallest at time smallest at at is how much here it is zero it should be considered even if bt is high or low next is that next point onwards next process onwards low bt need to consider see here we have used minimum waiting time what is minimum waiting after p1 the next process is p2 so when p1 will complete then only p2 will if p1 to compute p1 time is less what will happen p2 will be needing a less waiting time uh, so that it will be immediately follow the p1 so every process should try to see that it will give a minimum waiting time for the next process so that's why the whichever process is having lowest uh, lower waiting time it will be considered first that is what it means so we will see here so this is our gantt chart so we will we'll consider here in the similar way first process is what p1 so p1 is coming here so i will put it as p1 p1 arrival time is what zero and it needs how much time to process it need plus 8 so how much it will become 8 unit times and by the time 8 unit times you have seen that this particular process has uh, becomes a 
this is called as R Q that is ready Q you, you remember in the scheduler after ready Q what it is CPU is running are you getting my points CPU is running immediately it is processing one another it no need to wait it is processing so here the first has come now if you see a, a carefully after 8 which is having a lowest burst times the lowest burst time let me uh, put like this here the lowest burst time here it is say 1 uh, 1 next is 2 here then it is 3 here then it is 4 that means if I if I am uh, arrival time here it is if I am putting 0 and uh, let me put it as 1 2 3 4 so what is the next process is going to come here it is P2 and P2 needs how much time to process it needs plus 1 time that is it, need, uh, it needs a burst time is equal to 1 unit time so plus 8 plus 1 it becomes 9 here after 9 what is the burst time uh, in the case of a, what is 2 it is here it is P4 the process P4 will come because it is having lowest burst times so as I mentioned this 2 in the red uh, uh, color so automatically this processor how much execution time it needed a plus 2 so how much it becomes 11 after this which process will come Thus, uh, after 2 the next process is 3 that is P3 so the P3 is here now P3 needs how much times to process it needed 3 unit times plus 3 so it becomes 14 after P3 which is the next process that is a uh, process uh, comes as a P5 because that is the last process P5 P5 need how much units times it needs plus 6 so it becomes 20 so now we cancel remaining these things now what we have to do we have to uh, create a RT that means every process P1 need plus unit time it process so it becomes from here to here it becomes what happened it, it uses the full 8 unit time so it becomes 0 P2 has used full 1 unit time so it becomes 0 P3 use full unit uh, P4 use full unit times 2 so it becomes 0 P3 use full unit times then it becomes 0 P5 use use plus uh, it becomes 0 so now we ca we calculate the CT how the CT is that let us look from this angle that is CT so that is what I put it as here CT okay now you, let us see CT what is CT in this case from here P5 is how much what is the uh, ter uh, terminating point or end uh, point starting point end point in this case is a 20 the process execute at uh, 20 unit times what is P uh, after that is P3 P3 is a 14 so you put it this way P4 uh, 20 is the P4 it terminates, terminates at 11 so P4 11 then P2 P2 is 9 then P1 is 8 so you you see that this is then it is simple T80 is nothing but CT minus 80 so here you will uh, process then 8 8 12 8 and 16 and what is here 0 7 9 6 10 so you uh, you sum up everything so when you when you sum up here it will become uh, totally it comes around 52 and this one comes around as a 32 now we go to the bottom most. So what we have to our Gantt chart we have uh, completed. So this part is completed. Now we have to find turnaround time and waiting time. So we will write as average turnaround time is nothing but 
8 plus 8 plus 12 plus 8 plus 16 divided by number of processes how much it is uh, 5 so that is come as 32 by 5 is equal to no sorry 52 by 5 is equal to uh, 10 point then average waiting time waiting time is 0 plus 7 plus 9 plus 6 plus 10 divided by 5 how much it is coming that is 32 divided by 5 that is 6.4 if you try to see the uh, my previous slides and uh, try to compare uh, there you will find one uh, interesting thi uh, thing is that in the case of a, a FCS, in the case of a, if I take a average uh, TAT and average uh, waiting time, this under the case of uh, FCS, the average turnaround time was 10.6 and this was 6.6. .6. But here in this case, it is waiting time has reduced. So that is 10. So this is what the difference. So we have uh, seen that in the case of a, a SJF under the under the I can put it as SJF under the uh, non pre pre MT under the non pre MT situations we could able to process based on the based on the lowest lowest burst time so this is the entire uh, uh, scheduling algorithms of the uh, uh, burst uh, sjf scheduling algorithms where we have seen the burst times uh, as well as we have seen the waiting time has been reduced hence uh, this uh, processor is advantage as compared to the earlier fcfs scheduling algorithms so i conclude here thank you